when I was in New York to, to do the overseas flight, they're like, hey, where's your, your card? I said, I don't have it. They're like, well, you can't fly. I'm like, oh, yes, I can. I have my test right here and I have a compelling reason. And like I listed like everything that I needed to do to get into Poland. They're like, um, let me check with my boss. She goes, checks with her boss. She's like, oh, okay, you're fine. And here's an extra document to have when you land in uh, France. It's like, what? But okay, so then I land in France and there's two lines. There's one with the V and there's one without the V. And it's hilarious, bro. It was like jam packed, the one with the V. And there was like two or three people that went in the other line and the same thing happened. They're like, what are you doing? You can't be here. Like, cause France is freaking crazy with this stuff. And uh, I'm like, yes, I can. Here's my compelling reason. Here's this, here's the rules, show them everything. They're like, oh, okay. Boom. <laughs> but th this is a point to everyone that thinks like, oh no, like the rules are this and that. Like if you just do things like for the most part, you can do whatever the hell you want. There's such a crazy amount of fear porn on so many different levels and whether it be me medical, but then also just from the travel side to get you stagnant, to get you to stay in your bubble. And because then once you're in your bubble, you're not learning, you're not talking to anybody new, you're just doing the same Netflix stuff. You're, you know, it just essentially like stagnation, I think breeds ignorance in a way. Well, easier Dude, to I'd control say, too. Yeah, totally, totally. And, and I mean, it's the whole like 1984 comparison where everyone stays in their country and city and you can't go outside. And then it makes being, it makes the foreigners and the other country to be the enemy much more easy because you think of them as less human. And I'm not saying we're at that level at all right now, but when travel started to get restricted, I was like, we are Damn. close with the people. I don't have uh, the the thing. They're, they're yeah. Saying Although I, I think people. I, I got more hope than ever that like, it's about to flip around, at least in some places in the Nordics right now, I think by, March in Finland, every restriction, every mandate will be gone. I think Denmark, Sweden, Norway, same kind of thing. It won't be like that everywhere, but there's always normally, you know, if something really fucked up's going on in the world, it's only happening in one place. You know, it's it becomes selective. And then 50 years later, we look back on history like, damn, how did that happen there? And and it just goes like that. But dude, on to your point, I've traveled in the last two years. First, I drove from northeastern Finland to southwestern Portugal, like 5,500 kilometers, I don't know, 3,000 miles or something. And then I've also then lived in Spain, Czech Republic, and Finland in the last two years. So in my last seven years, I've probably moved around and traveled the most in a time that we quote unquote shouldn't be traveling at all. I hope the dominoes continue to fall because then I'll look back and be like, okay, you know, I'm glad I, I did what I did. And the more I did get it, the more I got into that uh, the mindset of, uh, was it the sunk cost fallacy? Like I was talking to my buddy who's in the whole uh, medical stuff. I'm like, damn, am I just like, the more I hold out, the more I'm getting in my bubble that I will for sure never get it and whatnot. You're pot committed at this point. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, I've already gone this far. So, I mean, I, I got to keep holding out. You know what I mean? But if this uh, if this happens, I'm going to look back and be like, damn, I was one of the people that, you know, stuck <laughs> to my guns and didn't just, you know, bend over and say, yes, daddy, government, like, take me. Yeah. And to quote one of your favorite books, I never ended up finishing it, but I, I got what I needed to get out of it. It's still in the van in Portugal that got abandoned on the street. But the how I found freedom in an unfree world, he says something along the lines of don't try and change the rules because it's going to be way too difficult of a task. But whatever system you're in, no matter how oppressive, no matter what it is, you learn the rules and then you figure out like loopholes or ways to get around it. He mainly talks about it like from a tax perspective in this travel way. Like you said, I got this paper that shows this. I have this. I have the test like. Yeah, there's all these different ways to do it, but there's a way to do it is the key thing. And bro, same, actually, now that I think about it, same shit happened when I flew from Lisbon back to Finland on New Year's. Like, they just make all the rules so vague. They the do world. that so you don't know what they do, so you just sit in your room. Like, the person at the check-in at New York, she had no idea what I was talking about. She had to go ask her boss. So the people that are supposed to be controlling this they have no idea either. It's not. No, no. It, they're just, I mean, and I get like and sympathize with a lot of people that are just kind of doing their job, quote unquote. But it, I always then wonder like, okay, well, at what point one step higher than just doing your job? And 
but there was the same the Finnair website said you needed to you need to have this or, or have one shot a booster like list all these things and then at the very very end it says or a test that says you're negative and at the very end it says but if you don't have any of that you can just get tested within 24 hours of arrival and it was and so I was like on the I was on the message with like them talking about baggage stuff and you know they ask it, oh, can I help you with anything else today? I go, yeah, actually, I'm reading your terms and services right now. Do I need a test before I go? They're like, well, they like didn't want to admit it, but a- according to that, no, you don't. And I was like, all right. Do you know why though? Do you know why test? though? It's crazy because in the future they're gonna be like, hey, we we didn't. This wasn't mandatory. If you read the rules, you didn't need to get this. They're all exactly. clear shot of any lawsuits that happen. I mean, it's nuts. If you actually look True. into this, it's bananas. But it's totally to be like, what do you mean? This was your own free choice. You're the one that decided to do this. Yeah, yeah. 50 years when it's written in the history books, it'll say, well, everyone chose to do this. It wasn't, no one forced them. And it's like, well, technically you're right. Technically that is true. <laughs> Hey, a point I want to make about the how I found freedom. He did say that, like, there's rules and you got to figure out, you know, to go around them. And there's always ways. But he also said, look, if you think doing something illegal is worth it to you, you just got to be able to pay the price. So if you get caught, you're going to jail. And if that's worth it to you, then go for it. But the big point was, okay, if you're not willing to do that, then you can't bitch. And you need to go around the rules and you need to figure stuff out. Like if you hate taxes so much, well, you got to do as much as you possibly can to limit that, which I'm doing. But (laughs) if you really hate taxes and you think that this is theft against the government, then don't pay them. But if you get caught, then that's on you. But he's basically just putting your life into your own hands and then not complaining about uh, things that are like basically out of your control. And if they are, then pay the price, baby. 